what's going on everybody kwaku here back with another video on this uh another day of december today i have for you an app review as you saw in the title it is a fluent screen recorder now fluent screen recorder is a very straightforward application it's simply an application to record your screen but it's styled in a fluent design manner um so i've talked about fluent design all the time so i won't get into it in this video but it does have all the rounded corners for Windows 11, so it's kind of shaped like for Windows 11 with the rounded corners in places everywhere needed that needs those rounded corners is there. Things are rightly laid out nicely and everything's easy to access. Um, so now we're going to go into the application and see just what exactly the elements are. So you got the first element here, which is your big record button. Start recording. You click that and it starts recording. The next button up here, up the top on the bar is the always on top button. When you do that, it opens up, it makes it a con a, like a compact mode. Um, so that's pretty dope. And then you still get access to these uh, entries here when you're in compact mode or the full normal mode. Uh, you got your resolution. You can set it between 8K, 4K, 1080, which is full HD, or 720p. Um, you can set your frame rate up to 60 FPS, um, which I'm going to just keep it on for this demo purposes. You can also change your bit rate to up to 72 megabits per second. I'll keep it at 36 on average so it doesn't eat up a ton of space when I'm doing these test recordings. Um, and then it says use source size as video resolution. Basically, all that means in a nutshell is this application when you check this off, you see that resolution gets grayed out. And basically all that means is that whatever the resolution of your panel or display is, it will just use that resolution as the recording resolution. So if it's 1080, if you have a 1920 by 1080 resolution on your computer uh, and you're set to that currently, it'll just the video recording will be 1920 by 1080 and so on. Um, another thing here, you got video preview. And then you also got recording audio or audio recording. And basically what this means, if you notice that microphone recording is off, audio recording, I believe, means that it will just, if with it on, it'll just record your microphone audio as well as your desktop audio. Uh, it'll do both all together. This is just audio all together. So when you check it off, you notice that microphone recording then lets you be ungrazed and makes it white. And basically, I think that all that means is basically... Uh, you can now just choose to only record the microphone or you can record all desktop. There's no option of no microphone, only desktop. It's only, it's all or nothing pretty much. So if I check this off, you notice that audio recording is then turned off. If I check this off, you know that audio recording is on and microphone is off. Um, but I'm pretty sure all that means is that audio recording records everything. I could be wrong. And microphone recording records just your microphone. So with that, I'm going to just leave those aside. Next up, go to the settings. There isn't too much here in the settings. Uh, you got your system microphone settings, which basically just takes you a shortcut to the settings app of Windows, Windows 10 or 11, whatever you use, and it lets you modify your microphone settings so you can set the correct microphone. Um, another thing here, you got your gallery view. Now that is basically right here. Uh, when you finish recording, I believe, when you finish recording, uh, a recording on this application your pre-recorded stuff that you save will show up here or they should show up here um, and so if you turn on gallery review I believe that all your stuff will show up as you record things here another thing here is use system player to open videos basically whatever your default system player is um, it will use that to open videos rather than the built-in system player of the built-in application player for this application, which I'll show you in a second. And then you got open and overlay mode by default. Now, another thing that I like to do is always make sure that this about the app area is there in every application and you see it there. Uh, one reason why I like to do this is because I feel like if you're a developer, it doesn't matter if it's a UWP application, it's a progressive web app, it's anything, there should be a way to contact you, the developer, if something goes wrong or if I just wanna speak to you real quick, there should be a way to report a bug or contact a developer. And this application has that, so kudos to that person. And of course, whoever created it, I don't remember off the top of my head, I will put that person's information in the description box so you guys can uh, follow them or take a look at their stuff or their website if they have anything listed. Um, so that's about it. Now let's go into a recording sample. So you see here, when you click the start recording, uh, you get these this selection here, it says share your window. 
And what share your window does is it shows you your currently open or available windows that are in your operating system that you're running. And see, I'm only running the Microsoft Store, Fluent Screen Recorder, and Streamlabs Desktop. Um, so I can choose to record Streamlabs Desktop while recording through Fluent Screen Recorder. I um, know I'm recording already, and I can record the screen too. Uh, and I can choose whichever one I want to do, and it'll only record those windows. If I click Share Your Display, you notice it gives me a preview of the display itself. And basically all that does is it then lets you just record your entire display. So let's say you're doing a demo about something, you want to show an animation sample of the start menu or something popping up, uh, you want to pick share your display and that way you get those things. Ideally probably set it 60 frames per second so it looks all smooth and concept like and there you go. So for this purposes I'm going to hit display one which is my only display. Hit OK and you can see that the yellow bars around are in fact there um, on this thing. So if I want to hit stop recording, all I can do is just hit this button here, stop recording. Uh, if I minimize this and then start doing my stuff, let's say I edit out all the extra stuff so you don't see Fluent Screen Recorder that I just opened. But in a nutshell, it is a pretty clean application. Everything just looks good. Let's say I open up the Microsoft Store and this is the, the listing for it. In fact, it's Filippo Fideli. Uh, and that's who created Fluent Screen Recorder. So kudos to you for this excellent job well done. Here's some samples of uh, Fluent Screen Recorder in action. I gotta say it looks a lot better in the screenshots than it does in my screen here. Um, yeah, so it's it's a nice application overall. Let's close it out and then let's and then end the recording. And then let's take a look. So you can see that it does show everything that I just did. And you can see it does show that still too. Everything looks clean, everything looks good, it looks high frame rate. Um, and then I'll hit save. And then what I'll do is, there you go. You see it actually shows up right there. And if I click it again, double click it, you see that it opens it up just like that with your volume controls. Looks like it's a little cut off. I guess there's one thing that the person should fix, Filippo. Um, this area right here, I'm not sure if it's my monitor or if it works, it's for everybody, but this area right here is cut off, especially right here where you get these volume controls. So that probably should be realigned and adjusted. In fact, it doesn't really look like any of these icons on this left side are aligned at the bottom at all. Eh, I guess these two are aligned, but this is definitely needs to, needs to be fixed. Um, overall though, I gotta say, and also has cast a device. So if you wanna cast to a Chromecast device, you can do that, or a mirror cast device, you can do that. So overall, I gotta say, will I be using Fluent Screen Recorder uh, for some future videos? Maybe, I might I might test it out and do some normal videos with Fluent Screen Recorder instead of uh, Streamlabs OBS. But the one thing I do like more about OBS and Streamlabs OBS over this Fluent Screen Recorder, because this is a more basic screen recorder, is that um, I can actually adjust how loud my sound is on it. I can adjust the sliders and see how loud I want my microphone, how loud I want my desktop and things like that. On here, it looks like it's just whatever is default. Nothing, you can't adjust anything. So I'd say, Filippo, if you were gonna make a more advanced version of this thing, like call it Fluent Screen Recorder Advanced Edition or something, add those abilities in. You know, you don't need to copy OBS and Fluent uh, Streamlabs OBS, but add ability, a way to adjust your desktop audio, adjust your microphone audio so that you can choose how loud it gets. That would be a cool option to add. Um, honestly, if you added that alone, that might be all I need to do to make videos from now on that are screen recordings. So yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below about this application, Fluent Screen Recorder by Filippo, what was his name? Uh, Filippo Fideli, not Fideli. Took Italian for about a year or so, so I know how to say those L's. So yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. You see here, it's free, and uh, I'll catch you guys in the next one.